ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسول اما بعد so we we'll continue reading from the very beneficial book Ighathat al-Lahfan min Masaid al-Shaytan by the Imam Ibn Qayyim al-Jawziyya rahimahullah ta'ala and now we reach al-Bab al-Ashir the 10th chapter fi alamat marad al-qalb wa sihhatih signs of the heart's sickness and its health and this is a very lengthy chapter, Ikhwan, so what we'll do, we'll just read the majority of, well, we'll just read through it. Most of it, alhamdulillah, is well, it's clear. And uh, perhaps we'll just mention some commentary on some of the, some of the parts, bi'idhanillahi ta'ala. And this is a very tremendous chapter, uh, benefited tremendously by reading this chapter. And the other chapters before it, very, very tremendous chapter where Ibn Qayyim, he touches on some tremendous points as it relates to the heart and the signs of its sickness and the signs of its health. So we say, وَبِاللَّهِ التَّوْفِيقِ He says, رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَكُلُّ عُضْوِ مِنْ أَعْضَاءِ الْبَدْنِ خُلِقَ لِفِعْلٍ خَاصٍ بِهِ كَمَالُهُ فِي حُسُولِ ذَلِكَ الْفِعْلُ مِنْهُ وَمَرْضُهُ أَنْ يَتَعَذَّرَ عَلَيْهِ الْفِعْلُ الَّذِي خُلِقَ لَهِ حَتَّى لَا يَصْدُرَ مِنْهُ أَوْ يَصْدُرَ مع نوع من من الاضطراب فمرض اليد أن يتعذر عليها البطش ومرض العين أن يتعذر عليه النظر والرؤية ومرض اللسان أن يتعذر عليه النطق ومرض البدن أن يتعذر عليه حركته الطبيعية أو يضعف ومرض القلب أن يتعذر عليه ما خلق له من المعرفة بالله ومحبته والشوق إلى لقائه والإنابة إليه وإيثار ذلك على كل شهوة Ibn Qayyim, he says, Rahimahullah, every part of the body was created to do a specific task. When it is functioning at its best, it is able to perform that task flawlessly. However, when that body part is damaged, it is unable to perform the duty in which it was created to do, to the point it may not be able to do it at all. Or if it can, it has some type of flaw or disability. When the hand has a problem, it cannot grasp properly. When the eye has a problem, it cannot see properly. When the tongue has a problem, one cannot speak properly. And when the body has a problem, it cannot move naturally as, it, as the body would move. Or its movement will be stagnant. As for the sickness of the heart, then this is it being unable to do what it was created for. Such as knowing Allah, loving Him, yearning to meet Him, Turning to him with repentance and preferring this over every shahwa, over every vain desire. Ibn Qayyim says, Ikhwan, لو عرف العبد كل شيء ولم يعرف ربه فكأنه لم يعرف شيئا ولو نال كل حظ من حظوظ الدنيا ولذاتها وشهواتها ولم يظفر بمحبة الله والشوق إليه والأنس به فكأنه لم يظفر بلذة ولا نعيم ولا ولا قرة عين. He says, therefore, if the servant knows everything but does not know his Lord, then it is as if he knows nothing. If he was to if he was to have all the affluence of this world and its pleasures, but does not succeed with gaining the love of Allah, yearning for him and finding solace in that, then it is, if, it is as if he has not obtained any pleasure, no bliss, nor comfort. بَلْ إِذَا كَانَ الْقَلْبُ خَالِيًا مِنْ ذَلِكَ عَادَ السِّلْكِ الْحُضُوذُ وَالَّذَّاتُ عَذَابًا لَهُ وَلَا بُدْ فَيَسِيرُ مُعَذَّبًا بِنَفْسِي مَا كَانَ مُنَعَّمًا بِهِ مِنْ جِهَتَيْنِ من جهة حصرة فوته وأنه حيل بينه وبينه مع شدة تعلق روحه به ومن جهة فوت ما هو خير 
له وأنفع وأدوى محيث لم يحصل له فالمحبوب الحاصل فات والمحبوب الأعظم لم يذفر به He said rather if the heart is void of all of that meaning all of what? Knowing Allah loving Him, yearning to meet Him turning to Him with repenting, etc. If the heart is void of all of that that pleasure that one has in this dunya, that affluence and enjoyment will turn into torment for him. And this is a must. He will be punished with the same thing he used to find pleasure in. And this is from two aspects. Look, listen to this, Ikhwan. How would, be, how would he be punished with that which he used to find pleasure in? This is from two aspects. From the aspect of regret and missing out and that a barrier will be placed between him and those things which his soul is eagerly attached to. And then from the aspect of missing out on what is better and more beneficial and more everlasting, he would not attain these things. So the beloved things he attained left him, and in addition, he is blocked from attaining matters greater and more beloved than them. Now, so Juan, the intelligent one, he doesn't choose this dunya over what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't, he doesn't choose the pleasures of this dunya over what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Nuqaymi says, وَكُلُّ مَنْ عَرَفَ اللَّهَ أَحَبَّهُ وَأَخْلَصِ الْعِبَادَةَ لَهُ وَلَا بُدْ وَلَمْ يُؤْثِرْ عَلَيْهِ شَيْءٍ مِنَ الْمَحْبُوبَاتِ فَمَنْ آثَرَ عَلَيْهِ شَيْءٍ مِنَ الْمَحْبُوبَاتِ فقلبه مريض كما أن المعدة إذا اعتادت أكل خبيث وآثرته على الطيب سقطت عنها شهوة الطيب وتعوضت بمحبة غيره He said everyone who truly knows Allah loves him and makes all worship sincerely for him and this is a must they do not prefer anything from the desired matters over this Whoever prefers any of the desired matters over this, then his heart is sick. Whoever prefers any of the desires over this, then his heart is sick. And this is just like if bad foods are constantly eaten, and one prefers them over the good foods and healthy foods, then one will lose all desire to eat healthy foods. Instead, his love will be for those other foods. وقد يمرض القلب ويشتد مرضه ولا يعرف به صاحبه لاشتغاله وانصرافه عن معرفة عن معرفة صحته وأسبابها بل قد يموت وصاحبه لا يشعر بموته وعلامة ذلك ألا تؤلمه جرحات القبائح ولا يوجعه جهلة بالحق جهله بالحق وأقائده الباطلة فإن القلب إذا كان فيه حياة يألم بورود القبيح عليه ويألم بجهله بالحق بحسب حياته وما لجرح بميت إيلام. He says, furthermore, the heart may become sick and become severely sick and a person does not even realize it because he's preoccupied with other things. And it's turned away from learning how his heart can be cured and the reasons for that. Rather, the heart can die and a person doesn't even know his heart is dead. A sign of this is that he's not affected by wickedness and repulsive matters. He's not affected by wickedness and repulsive matters. And he is not pained by his ignorance of the truth and the false beliefs and the, and the false belief that he's upon. Whenever the heart has life within it, it is pain when it comes across filth and wickedness. It likewise hurts due to his ignorance of the truth, and this is all according to the life within it. Just as the poet said, مَنْ يَهُنْ يَسْهُلِ الْحَوَانُ عَلَيْ مَا لِجَرْحٍ بِمَيَّةٍ إِيلَامٍ Whoever himself becomes despicable, then he'll accept despicable treatment. The dead person cannot feel any wound. 
Nam Ikhwan. A person can look at all types of wickedness and repulsive matters. If their heart is sick, a person can look at all types of wickedness and repulsive matters from kufr and shirk and ma'asi sins. And none of that affects his heart. None of that affects his heart. Pleasant things and wicked things are all the same. Naam. So if one is like this ikhwan, then know that your heart is sick. Know that your heart is sick or that the heart may even be dead. Look how many people ikhwan there upon aqaid baltila. There upon false beliefs. You find today, you find individuals, they unite and they're massaging with the, with the nation of Islam. Saying they're praying with the nation of Islam. And the nation of Islam, they praise them. You find some masajid, they have jazz bands in the masajid. You find this ikhwan. And there's no difference between, with these individuals between that and between, for example, yani people beseeching Allah subhanahu wa, ta- subhanahu wa ta'ala upon Arafah. Or making tawaf around the, bayt, the, uh, uh, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They find no difference in the two. It shows the sickness of some people's hearts, ya ikhwan. And when some people hear these matters, they don't cringe when they hear these matters. They don't cringe when, when you hear that people, they claim, they claim Islam, they're praying, with the, they're praying with the nation of Islam. Kufar. Nation of Islam, they're kufar. Naam. So this is from the alamat of the marad of the qalb, ya ikhwan, as Ibn al-Qayyim, he's mentioning. And then he says, وَقَدْ يَشْعُرُ بِمَرْضِهِ وَلَكِنْ يَشْتَدُّ عَلَيْهِ تَحَمُّلُ مَرَارَةِ الدَّوَاءِ وَالصَّبْرِ عَلَيْهَا فَيُؤْثِرُ بَقَاءَ أَلْمِهِ عَلَى مَشَقَّةِ الدَّوَاءِ فَإِنَّ دَوَاءَهُ فِي مُخَالَفَةِ الْهَوَى وَذَلِكَ أَصْعَبُ شَيْءٍ وَذَلِكَ أَصْعَبُ شَيْءٍ عَلَى النَّفْسِ وَلَيْسَ أَن وَلَيْسَ لَهَا أَنْفَعُ مِنْهُ He says also perhaps one can feel one may can feel when the heart is becoming sick however it is hard for him to withstand the bitter taste of the medicine he needs and it's hard for him to remain patient upon that thus he prefers that the pain stays with him over the hardship of taking the medicine he needs. His medicine is by opposing his vain desires. And this is the hardest thing upon the soul. And there is nothing more beneficial for the soul than that. Allahu Akbar. Now, Mekhwan, some people, they feel when their heart is sick. They know when they're committing ma'asi. And they know when they're disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they know the medicine they need. By opposing their hawa, stop texting that woman. Stop going on Instagram if there's a fitna for you. Stop doing this, stop doing that. They know what they need to do. But it's hard for them to take that step. It's hard for them to take that step. Although they know what they need. They know they need to, like, like Ibn Qayyim, he says, that medicine is by opposing his vain desires. This is the hardest thing upon the soul. And there's nothing more beneficial for the soul than opposing his desires. Than opposing his vain desires. He says, وَتَارَةً يُوَطِّنُ نَفْسَهُ عَلَى الصَّبْرِ ثُمَّ يَنْفَسِخُ عَزْمُهُ وَلَا يَسْتَمِرُ مَعَهُ لِضَعْفِ عِلْمِهِ وَبَصِيرَتِهِ وَصَبْرِهِ كَمَنْ دَخَلَ فِي طَرِيقٍ مَخُوفٍ مُفْتٍ إِلَى غَايَةِ الْأَمْنِ وَهُوَ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّهُ إِنْ صَبْرَ عَلَيْهِ إِنْ قَضَ الْخَوْفُ وَأَعْقَبُهُ الْأَمْنِ He said other times a person accustoms himself to having patience then his determination it dwindles and he does not persevere. This is due to his lack of knowledge, insight and patience. His example is like the one who must walk a scary path which eventually leads to safety. He knows that if he stays patient and walks that path, the fear will vanish, and at the end he will be safe. Thus, he needs strong resilience and patience and strong certainty as to where his final destination is. 
But when his patience and certain uncertainty weaken, he turns back from that road, not being able to withstand his hardships, especially if he has no one to accompany him and he fears walking that path alone. He begins to say, where have the people gone? In them, I have a fine example. He says, وَهَذِي حَالُ أَكْثِرِ الْخَلْقِ وَهُوَ الَّتِي أَهْلَكَتْهُمْ فَالْبَصِيرُ الصَّادِقِ لَا يَسْتَوْحِشُ مِنْ قِدْلَةِ الرَّفِيقِ And this is some Jameer kalam is going to come on these next few points, inshallah ta'ala. لا يَسْتَوْحِشُ مِنْ قِدْلَةِ الرَّفِيقِ وَلَا مِنْ فَقْدِهِ إِذَا اسْتَشْعَرَ قَلْبُهُ مرافقة رعي الأول الذين أنعم الله عليه من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا فتفرد العبد في طريق طلبه دليل على صدق الطلب الله أكبر. He says, and this is the reality of most people, and this is what destroys them. The truthful one possessing insight, he never feels lonely. Due to having few companions. He never feels lonely due, to have, lonely due to having few companions. Even if he lost every friend. This is when his heart knows that he is companioning the best of mankind. And whosoever obeys Allah in the messenger. That they will be in the company of those on whom Allah has bestowed his grace. From the prophets. The truth for the martyrs and the righteous. And how excellent these are as companions. Surah to Nisa, ayat 69. Thus, the servant opting to be alone upon this path, his path of seeking the truth and being upon obedience. The servant, the servant opting to do this, it proves the truthfulness of his pursuit. Ikhwan, this is a tremendous point by Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala. Because here, he deals with was something that many people, they go through, or some, or many people they went through before, which is the issue of peer pressure. This issue of peer pressure that affects some people. Some people, Juan, they just have to do what they see others doing. Everybody else is doing such and such. He has IG. He's rapping on Instagram. He's dancing. Let me do that. Or let me at least like this post. And this is, this is another musiba, Akhwan, that you see. That you see Muslims doing ma'asi on Instagram and on Facebook. You find a Muslim rapping. Right? And you find people commenting saying, MashaAllah. Or putting a, a fire sign. This is, MashaAllah on what? You find two people that are getting married, Muslims. She's mutabarrija. She's may not, she may not even be covering. People say, MashaAllah, may Allah bless this marriage. Bless what? This is clear ma'asi. How can Allah bless that? This is a musibah, ikhwan. This is a calamity. Now, you find some sisters. They see all these sisters traveling without maharam. They go into this place and that place. Even they may go to Umrah or Hajj. They don't have a maharam. Right? Sister, they invited you. And you don't want to say to them, well, I'm not traveling without a mahram. This is haram. I know what Allah and His Messenger commanded. The permissibility of, for the woman traveling without a, without, without a mahram. She doesn't want to say this, so she say, I'll just go. I wanted to please them. Now, So, Ikhwan, this is, a very important point, that a person should not feel any alienation, any isolation, if they are upon the path of the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because you're on the path of who? The prophets and the messengers and the siddiqeen, the truthful, and the shuhada, the martyrs. They're the best companions, even if you're alone, even if you're by yourself. And Ikhwan, I'll give another, another example. And perhaps it's munasib to be mentioned. Even we find some of our youth who used to gather in the masjid here. And perhaps people may even find this in their other cities. They used to gather in the masjid. 
All they want to do now is hang out at coffee shops. All they want to do is hang out in coffee shops. Durus are being present. Durus on the masjid. Durus of Quran. Durus in the Arabic language. Durus in Tawheed and Aqeedah. But they want to hang out in coffee shops. Or slap box right here outside on the, pa- on the pavement, what we've seen. Or other than that. And then when you look at the halaqat of Quran, you only find a few people. You only find a few people. MashaAllah, you have Sheikh Qamar al-Din teaching the Quran. Ustad Muhammad Nasir. Ustad Muhammad Sanagali. Halaqat al-Quran. The Arabic language. So the parents say, Khwan, if you find your children, they're the ones that's hanging outside with these youth. Bring your, ch- bring, your, bring your children back in the masjid. That's why you're the parent. That's why Allah made you the parent. The child is not the parent. Don't let them fall into what some of these youth have fallen into. Either they don't have any parents or their parents don't care. We've seen this, Ikhwan. Good youth used to be in the masjid. And you, again, you find, the, you find the peer pressure. Some of the youth that we see, tayyibin, they now they want to hang out with them. Durus in the masjid, they're hanging at the coffee shop. And this is what Ibn Qayyim Al-Khwan, this is what he's addressing. This matter of peer pressure. And you have a tabak who's older than that, because that tabak is maybe between 10 to 16 maybe. Then you have another tabaka, youth, 17 to maybe 25, even maybe 30. Likewise, durus in the masjid, lectures in the masjid, they're just concerned with shaking everybody's hand that come up and down the avenue. This is what they're concerned with. Smiling and shaking. Alhamdulillah, that's a ni'mah. They're among the people of sunnah. That's jayyid. But it's that which is more beneficial being in the masjid. Being in the Quran classes. Being in the Arabic classes. So my message is to the, to the shabab. When you see those individuals and they're doing that, you be opposite to them. You be upon the path, even if you're by yourself. And this is likewise for the sisters, the young sisters. If you see that from these individuals, you oppose them. Be opposite of them. Be upon the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wanting good for yourself, wanting to benefit. Because even if you're by yourself, in reality, you're not by yourself. Shaykh Unash Shaykh Ubaid, he would say, كيف يستوحش? How can a person feel loneliness when these individuals, these are your companions in the hereafter, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, the prophets and the messengers and the martyrs and the truth. Who, don't want to be, who doesn't want to be with them? Who doesn't want to be with them? You may be alone in this dunya, in the hereafter, these are your rufaqa. These are your companions. So let the parents pay attention to that, ya akhwan. Sisters and brothers. If you have children and they've caught up in that, bring your children back to the masjid. Bring your children back to the masjid. And don't let them waste their time like you find some of these Shabbat wasting their time. Lectures going on, they slap boxing across the street. What's this? Slap boxing on the sidewalk. That's the al waqt. And Adam and Maru'a as well. There's no Maru'a in that. Where's the maru in that? Slap boxing on the sidewalk. Sisters walking past Kufar, you out there slap boxing. You think this is something noble. It's not nothing noble. Or the youth, they're hanging out in front of the cafe. All they're doing is scrolling on their phone like this. So pay attention to that, ya akhwan. The Ibn Qayyim, he goes on to say, and again, Kalam Jamil. ولقد سئل إسحاق بن راهوي عن مسألة فأجاب عنها فقيل له إن أخاك أحمد بن حنبل يقول فيها بمثل قولك فقال ما ظننت أن أحد يوافقني عليها ولم يستوحش بعد ظهور الصواب له من عدم الموافق فإن الحق إذا لاح وتبين لم يحتج إلى شاهد يشهد به والقلب يبصر الحق كما تبصر العين الشمس فإذا رأى الراعي والشمس لم يحتج في علمه بها واعتقاده أنها طالعة إلى من يشهد بذلك ويوافقه عليه 
Ishaq ibn Rahuwain, he was asked about a matter and he responded to it. Then it was said to him, your brother Ahmed ibn Hamdi says about this, the like of what you said. He responded, I did not think anyone would agree with me in this. So Ibn Qayyim, he says, he, meaning Ishaq, he did not feel isolated due to no one agreeing with him after he saw his position to be in line with what is correct. This is because when the truth becomes clear and visible, there is no need to have a witness to come and testify to it. The heart sees the truth, just as the eye sees the sun. When one sees the sun, he then has no need for anyone else to testify to it and agree with him in order for him to, to, to have knowledge and believe that the sun is risen. Now, Mikhan, if you see the haq, it goes, it goes in accordance to what is known in the kitab of the sunnah. It goes in accordance to what the son of this ummah were upon. You don't need anybody else. You don't need anybody else. You see, you see an individual working with an institute like Yaqeen. Ikhwanis, clear Ikhwanis. Ikhwani methodology. This suffices you. You don't, you don't need anybody to come and testify. You don't need anyone else to come and testify that either this is truth or falsehood. You know this is falsehood. And you hold on to that. And you, to deen Allah, be anna hadha batil. Naam. You don't need anyone else. He says, وَمَا أَحْسُنُ مَا قَالَ أَبُوْ مُحَمَّدْ عَبْدُ الرَّحْمَنِ بْنِ إِسْمَعِيلِ الْمَعْرُوفِ فِي أَبِي شَامِ فِي كِتَابِ الْحَوَادِثِ وَالْبِدْعِ حَيْثُ جَاءَ الْأَمْرُ بِلُزُومِ الْجَمَاعَةِ فَالْمُرَادُ بِهِ لُزُومِ الْحَقِّ وَاتِّبَاعُهُ وَإِنْ كَانَ الْمُتَمَسِّكْ بِهِ قَلِيلًا وَالْمُخَالِفُ لَهُ كَثِيرًا لِأَنَّ الْحَقَّ هُوَ الَّذِي كَانَتْ عَلَيْهِ الْجَمَاعَةُ الْأُولَى مِنْ أَهْدِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَأَصْحَابِهِ وَلَا نَظْرَ إِلَى كَثْرَةِ أَهْلِ الْبَاطِلِ بَعْدَهُمْ He said how excellent what was stated by Abu Muhammad Abdul Rahman ibn Ismail, known as Abu Shama, in his book, Al Hawadithu Wal Bid'ah, Innovations and Nunivinant Matters. Where the command has come to cling to the jama'ah. And the meaning of this is to cling to the truth and follow it, even if those clinging to it are few and those who oppose it are many. Because the truth is what, was, it was what the first jama'ah were upon in the time of the Prophet and his companions. The great number of people of falsehood after them is not even considered. Now, so the truth is what the companions were upon, Ya Khan al Awwal. They didn't mix with the people of falsehood. They didn't praise the people of falsehood. They didn't cooperate with the people of falsehood. Now, so if you know that, and you cling upon this haq, and you cling upon what the salah of this ummah they, they were upon, then this suffices you. And the great number of people of falsehood that oppose you, you don't even consider that. He says, قال عمر بن ميمون الأودي سحبت معاذ من اليمن فما فارقته حتى واريته بالتراب بالشام ثم سحبت بعد أفقه الناس عبد الله بن مسعود فسمعت يقول عليكم الجماعة فإن يد الله على الجماعة ثم سمعت يوم من الأيام وهو يقول سيلي عليكم ولاة يؤخرون الصلاة عن مواقيتها فصلوا الصلاة لميقاتها هي الفريضة وصلوا معهم and we'll cut out some of the Arabic for the sake of time he's in Amr ibn Maymun al-Awdi he said I accompanied Mu'adh in Yemen and I did not leave him until I buried him in Sham after him I accompanied the most knowledgeable of the people Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and I heard him say upon you is to cling to the jama'ah for verily the hand of Allah is over the jama'ah then I heard him say one day Rulers will be placed over you. They will delay the prayer outside their stated times. So you all pray in their, state, in, in, in the, in the, in their times as they are the obligatory prayers. And then pray with them as they will be voluntary for you. Amr, he said, so I said to him, O companions of Muhammad, I do not know what you are narrating to us. He said, what do you mean? I said, you command me with the jama'ah and encourage me upon it. And then you say, pray the prayer alone as, is, as it is the obligatory prayer. And then pray in congregation with the rulers as it will be voluntary. Yani, what do you mean by this? Ibn Mas'ud, he responded. He said, oh, Amr ibn Mimun. Surely I thought you to be the most intelligent of the people of this town. Do you know what the jama'ah is? He said, I said, no. He said, the majority of the jama'ah are those who left the jama'ah. I Meaning the majority of the people are those who left the jama'ah. Meaning they left the truth, which is the main body of the Muslims, or the, what the main body of the Muslims were upon. He said, but the true jama'ah 
is whoever is in accordance with the truth, even if you're alone. Even if you're alone. وفي طريق أخرى فضرب على فخذه وقال ويحك إن جمهور الناس فارق الجماعة وإن الجماعة ما وافق طاعة ما وافق طاعة الله عز وجل قال نعيم بن حماد يعني إذا فسدت الجماعة فعليك بما كانت عليه الجماعة قبل أن تفسد وإن كنت وحدك فإنك أنت الجماعة حينئذ ذكره البيحقي وغيره and from, and from another chain it states he, meaning Abdullah bin Mas'ud, he hit me on the thigh. And he said, woe to you. Most people today have split from the jama'ah. And the jama'ah are those who are in accordance with the obedience of Allah. If this was in that time, Ikhwan, the time of the tabi'een, the end time of the sahaba, what would we say today? What do we say today, Ikhwan? He said the majority of people, they left the, they left the truth in his people, meaning the Muslims. It doesn't mean the kuffar. Majority of the people, they left the haq in his people. Nam, they split from the jama'ah. And the jama'ah are those in accordance with the obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal. Nam. So, Ikhwan, I advise myself and you all, be with the jama'ah. It doesn't mean the majority. It means the people who are upon the truth. The jama'ah, the truth, and the people holding on to the truth, even if they're small in number. Even if they're small in number. When you find many of the Muslims, and like Sheikh Fawzan, they boast with being Muslims. Even if they boast. About Islam and being Muslims. How many times do you see the people's, the profiles on, the, on IG, I love Islam, I love Allah, kether, kether, kether. And you look at you, you see what they're doing, you say, what type of mahabba is this? What type of mahabba is this? So even though you find people, they boast. And they're happy. And ascribing to Islam. And ascribing to loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in reality, they left the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the jama'ah. As Ibn al is saying, those who are in accordance with the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nu'aym ibn Hamad, he said, if the jama'ah becomes corrupt, then upon you is to cling to what the jama'ah was upon before it became corrupted. Even if you're alone, at that point, you will be the jama'ah. And this was mentioned by Al-Bayhaqi and others. Ibn Qayyim, he says, وقال Abu Shama عن Mubarak عن Hassan al-Basri. Abu Shama also said from Mubarak, Hassan al-Basri who said, the sunnah by the one who none deserves the right to be worshipped in truth except he is between going to extreme and falling into negligence. Therefore, be patient upon it. May Allah have mercy upon you. Because Ahl sunnah were the minority in the past and they are the minority in what will remain. They are those who do not go with the people of extravagance and their extravagance, nor the people of innovation with their innovations. They remain patient upon their sunnah until they met their Lord. So like this be you all. So like this be you all. And then he says, وَكَانَ مُحَمْرِ بْنَ أَسْمَ الطُوسِ الْإِمَامَ الْمُتَفَقَ عَلَىٰ إِمَامَتِهِ مَعَ رُتْبَتِهِ أَتْبَعَ النَّاسِ لِلسُّنَّةِ فِي زَمَانِهِ And Muhammad ibn Aslam al-Tusi, an imam whose, whose imam is agreed upon, along with his high station, he was the most diligent of the people in his time in following the sunnah. But he said, a sunnah from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has not reached me except that I acted upon it. I eagerly tried to perform tawaf around the Kaaba upon a riding mount, but I was unable to do so. Look, he saw the Prophet ﷺ in Hajjat al Wada. that the Prophet ﷺ, he made tawaf upon a ba'ir. He said, I even wanted to do that, but I wasn't able. I saw the Prophet ﷺ, he made tawaf upon his riding beast. I wanted to do that, to follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, but I wasn't able to do so. Naam. Some scholars of his era. فَسُئِلَ بَعْضُ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ فِي زَمَانِهِ عَنِ السَّوَادِ الْعَظَمِ أَلَذِينَ جَاءَ فِيهِمْ الْحَدِيثِ إِذَا اخْتَلَفَ النَّاسُ فَعَلِيكُمْ بِالسَّوَادِ الْعَظَمِ مَنَ السَّوَادِ الْعَظَمِ فَقَالْ مُحَمْدِ بْنَ أَسْمَ الْتُوسِي هُوَ السَّوَادِ الْعَظَمِ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ Listen to this point, Ikhwan. Some scholars of his era were asked about the sawad al-a'zam, the main body who's upon the truth. Some of the scholars, not the juhal, some of the scholars of his error, they were asked about the Sawad al A'zam. Who is the main body upon the truth? Those mentioned in the hadith, if the people differ, then upon you is to cling to the Sawad al A'zam. These scholars, they said, when they said, Who are the Sawad al A'zam? They said, Muhammad ibn Aslam at Tusi. 
السواد الأعظم. ابن القيم he says والصدق والله فإن العصر إذا كان فيه إمام عارف بالسنة داع إليها فهو الحجة وهو الإجماع وهو السواد الأعظم وهو سبيل المؤمنين التي من فارقها واتبع سواها والله الله ما تولى وأصلاه وأصلاه جهنم وسعد مصيرا. ابن القيم he says by Allah they have spoken the truth meaning those scholars because in a, in a given time if there is a person knowledgeable of the sunnah calling to it he is a hujja he is a lijma' he is the suwad al-a'zam he is the way of the believers which other people have abandoned and followed other than it thus Allah left them in the path they have chosen landed them in the hellfire and with an evil destiny let's stop right here Juan. these scholars who Describe one man with these descriptions. He is the Jama'ah. He's the Suwad al A'zam. He's the Sabil al Meaning, did those scholars have a gulu? Did those scholars go overboard? So, why is it, Ikhwan, when we mention Ashab al Sunnah in our time, those known for clarifying Sunnah? Those know those known for clarifying the haq from Baltil. When we mention the likes of Sheikh Fawz and Alama Fawzan and Alama Luhaydan, Rahimahullah, and Muqbir and Al Albani or Bin Baz. Or today when we mention Rabir or Ubaid, they say, Oh, you only have three scholars. They say you only have three scholars. Or four scholars. Or they say you, you have Ghulu, you only mention Sheikh Rabir. Scholars, when they were asked about the Suwad al A'zam in his time, they mentioned one man. You think it wasn't other scholars in that time? You think it wasn't other scholars in that time? It was other scholars, no doubt. They said Muhammad ibn Aslam al Tusi. He's the Jama'ah. He's the Suwad al A'zam. He's the Sabil al Mu'mineen. He's the Hujjah. He's Ijma'ah. One man. One man. So I dare these individuals say, say that these scholars had Ghulu. Say that these scholars who mentioned this about Muhammad Asma too, say that Hal Ghulu. They went overboard by describing him with, by describing him with all these descriptions. When you mention Sheikh Rabi, Sheikh Rabi Ya Khwan, Al Madhali, Hafidahullah Ta'ala. Most scholars they didn't know the hal of Sayyid Qutb in the 80s and the 90s. They didn't know the hal, the hal of Sayyid Qutb. And that which his book contained, Hilal al-Quran, from Takfir, and from Sabb al-Sahaba, and ridiculing the Anbiya, and likewise what is found in his book, Ma'alim, 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 Ma'alim fi tariq Milestones, and other than that from his books, the evil that these books contained, to the point that much, is the, much of the tatarruf and the extremism and the bombings and other than that that was found in the Muslim lands, the mustar was the books of Sayyid Qutb. The bloodshed and the bombings and other than that, the spilling of blood that was found in the Muslim lands, the mustar was who was Sayyid Qutb. Most scholars didn't know his hal. Some of our ulama quoted from me. You look at some of the, the books of our ulama. They quoted from the Al Quran. They didn't know. That's the ulama. But they, most didn't know the hal of Sayyid Qutb. Who was the main one who came and exposed the, the errors of Sayyid Qutb? It was Sheikh Rabi ibn Hadi al Madkhali. Hafidhullah Ta'ala. So that's why. Radiya man radiya wa sakhida man sakhid. When we say Sheikh Rabi is a hujjah. When we say he's a hujjah, and we say, when we mention that which the ulama they said, Hamali wa jarhu ta'adil, fly bear of jarhu ta'adil in this time, radiya man radiya wa sakhida man sakhida, we say it. Whoever likes it, they like it, whoever don't like it, they don't like it. We don't care. We don't care, ya akhwan, because how many people, they be turned back to the sawab, those who may have, was going to go out and do a bombing, kill innocent souls, meaning from the Muslims. They stop due to, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the works of this alam al-Rabbani, Shaykh Rabbi al-Madkhali, Habibullah ta'ala. So we mention these individuals, so you find, when we mention his name, 
Ahl Bid'ah, they cringe. And that's why you find people, they go on their members, even in this city, they try to ridicule Sheikh Rabi' وَيَنْقُسْ مِنْ قَدْرِهِ You find them, they try to do this. And that's why now, up until today, they're humiliated. These individuals, they're humiliated. No da'wah, no books, no khair in their da'wah, no barakah. These people, they're humiliated. And they'll be humiliated unless they return back to the sawab. And may Allah guide them in us. So now, he goes on to say, Nuqayyim, so what is intended is that from the signs of the illness of the heart is that it turns away from beneficial nourishment, which agrees with it to nourishing it, to nourishing it with unbeneficial things. And that it turns away from beneficial remedies to what contains harmful sickness. So hence there are four matters. One, beneficial nourishment. Two, remedial cure. Three, harmful nourishment. And four, malady. And then he says, فَالْقَلْبُ الصَّحِيِّ يُؤْثِرُ النَّافِعِ الشَّافِعِ عَلَى الضَّارِ الْمُؤْذِي The sound heart gives preference to what's, to what's beneficial and remedial or what is harmful and detrimental. And the sick heart does the opposite. The most beneficial nourishment is the nourishment of Iman. And the most beneficial treatment is that of the Qur'an. Allahu Akbar. And both of these contain nourishment and cure. Moreover, from the signs of the heart's health is that it draws away from this dunya and settles in the hereafter and becomes stationed there. And if it, and if it is from the, naam, as if it is from its inhabitants, it feels that it has come to this world as a stranger to take what it needs, to, to take what it needs from it and then returns to its home. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to Abdullah bin Umar, naam, كن في الدنيا كأنك غريب أو عابر أو عابر أو عابر سبيلا وعد نفسك من أهل القبور. He said to Abdullah bin Umar رضي الله عنهما, be in this life as if you are a stranger or a wayfarer and consider yourself to be from the inhabitants of the graveyards. And then Nuqaym he mentioned the lines of poetry which are also found as monuments to work هذه الأرواح إلى بلاد الأفراح, where he says فحي على جنات عدن فإنها منازل منازلك الأولى وفيها مخيم وَلَكِنَّنَا سَبِيُّ الْعَدُوِّ فَهَلْ تُرَى نَعُودُ إِلَىٰ أَوْطَانِنَا وَنُسَلِّمُ Ibn Qayyim, he says, he mentioned these, these words of poetry which are عظيم Come forth to gardens of bliss, for verily they are your very first home, and in them are pavilions. Naam, how is it our very first home, ya Akwan? Our father Adam was, was from the paradise. Our father Adam was from the paradise. So it's our very first home. وَفِيهَا مُخَيَّمُ And in it are pavilions. وَلَكِنَّنَا سَبْيُ الْعَدُوِّ فَهَلْ تَرَى However, we've been made captives by our enemy. Who? Iblis. Who, Iblis who tricked our father Adam. It was a cause for him to be expelled from the paradise. So however, we've been made captives by our enemy. So do you not see نَعُودُ إِلَىٰ أَوْطَانِنَا وَنُسَلِّمُ That we should return to our original homes, the paradise, and be safe. Ibn Qayyim, he says, وقال علي بن ابي طالب رضي الله عنه ان علي بن ابي طالب رضي الله عنه he said the life of this world is going behind us while the hereafter is coming towards us and they both have children so be from the children of the hereafter and do not be from the children of the dunya because today is action without reckoning and tomorrow is reckoning without any actions to be done also whenever the heart heals from its sickness it will move towards the hereafter and draw nearer to it up until it becomes from its people on the contrary Whenever the heart becomes sick and diseased, it prefers the dunya and takes residency in it until it becomes from its inhabitants. وَمَنْ عَلَمَاتِ صِحَةِ الْقَلْبِ And from the signs of the heart's health is that it will continue to disturb a person until it be pinched to Allah, humbly submits to him. It becomes attached to him as a beloved one in dire need attaches himself to the one he loves. This is the one who has life. Afwan, this is the one who has no life, success, bliss, or happiness except by pleasing him, drawing near to him, and finding solace with him. By him he finds tranquility, and with him he finds comfort and finds refuge. By him he rejoices, upon him he places his reliance and trust, and in him he hopes, and, 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 and in him he hopes, and he is the one who he fears. Remembering him is his nourishment, 
Loving him, meaning Allah, and yearning for him is the essence of his life, his bliss, pleasure, and joy. Turning to anyone besides him and being attached to anyone else is his ailment, and by returning back to him is his cure. This is signs of the healthy heart. These are from the signs of the healthy heart. Yeah, Khwan. He says, فَإِذَا حَصَلَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ سَكَنَ إِلَيْهِ وَطَمَعَنَّ بِهِ Therefore, when the heart finds his Lord, it finds calmness and tranquility with him. And that anxiety and disarray that is with him will go away. And that void of want in the heart will be filled. This is because in every heart, there is a need which nothing can fill except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has a disorder which cannot be set aright except by turning towards Allah. And it has a sickness which, which nothing can cure except sincere devotion to him and worshiping him alone. So the healthy heart continues to disturb a person up until it finds tranquility and comfort with its Lord uh, and the one who it, who it worships. And at that point, and at the point, and at that point, it would truly embrace the essence of life and find its sweet taste. It will enter into the realm of another life, opposite to the life of the negligent, those who turn away from the matter in which mankind was created, and the reason the paradise and hellfire were created. And due to it, the messengers were sent, and the books were revealed. So, if a person has no reward except the presence of a sound heart, this will be su- this, this will be sufficient as a recompense. Likewise, enough as a loss and punishment is he who misses out on it. Now, and then he quotes some lines of poetry. Whoever turns away from us, his share is deprivation and loss, and whoever loses out on us, it suffices that they have missed out. Then he says, And some people of devout worship, they would say, The ones who are pitied from this worldly life are those who left this world while not tasting the best of what it holds. It was said, And what is the best of what it holds? The person replied, The love of Allah and finding solace with him, yearning to meet him, and finding bliss in remembering and obeying him. This is the best of what this world holds, Ikhwan. It's not having a Lamborghini. It's not having a Mercedes. It's not having a, a huge house. This is, not the, this, is not, this is not the best of what this world holds. It's not taking all vacations day, every, every month or every, every few months, going to the islands and doing this and doing that. The best of what this world holds, Ikhwan, is having the yani, love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Finding solace with him, yearning to meet him, and finding bliss in remembering and obeying him. Another person said, Time passes by. Time passes by uh, time passes me by where I say, if the people of paradise experience the like the like of this, then surely they are in a blissful existence. Nah. Meaning this person is constantly in obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, constantly in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he has this feeling. And he says to himself, if the people of paradise experience the like of this, then surely they are in a blissful existence. And yet another stated, By Allah, no goodness can be found in this dunya except through loving and obeying Allah and not in uh, Nam. Nam, he said, وَقَالَ آخر وَمَا طَابَتِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا بِمَحَبَّتِهِ وَلَا الْجَنَّةِ إِلَّا بِرُؤْيَتِهِ وَمُشَاهَدَتِهِ يَكُوا سَلَاتُ رِكَاتُ and by Allah, no goodness can be found in this dunya except through loving Allah and no goodness in paradise except by seeing him, the Most High, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Muslim Ikhwan has a few more points. وَقَالَ أَبُلْ حُسَيْنَ الْوَرَّاقِ I believe in the book it says Abu Hassan. Both nuskhas I have it says Abu Hussein. So change that inshallah ta'ala. وَقَالَ أَبُلْ حُسَيْنَ الْوَرَّاقِ Abu Hussein al-Warraq, he stated, The life of this heart is in remembering the all-living who does not die. And the pleasant life is the one with Allah, nothing else. وَلِهَذَا كَانَ الْفَوْتُ عِنْدَ الْعَارِفِينَ بِاللَّهِ أَشَدَّ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الْمَوْتِ And due to this, among the devout worshippers, missing out on this was considered worse than death itself. Because missing out on Allah and remembering Him is being separated from truth, while death is merely being separated from the people. And how great a difference is between these two separations. Allahu Akbar. Look at this, Ikhwan. Missing out on this. Loving Allah. Look, Ikhwan, look at the look at the look at the solace and the and, and, and the joy of being in the, in the halakat of dhikr. Where you find people today is July 4th, people in the park partying, getting drunk, getting high, and other than that. They're missing out on, 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 on things like that. Perhaps some you might, might find some Muslims among them. Nah. What do we choose? This or that? No doubt we want to choose this over that. We choose this over that, Ikhwan. And we find comfort in this and sol- and solace in this. 
So he said, and another one said, whosoever's eye finds comfort with Allah the most high, then every eye will find comfort with him. And whosoever eyes, and whosoever's eye does not find comfort with Allah, his heart is torn with regret over the worldly life. Yahya ibn Mu'adh, he said, من سر بخدمة الله سرت الأشياء كلها بخدمته Whoever is happy to serve Allah, everything will be happy to serve him. And whoever's eye finds comfort with Allah, then every eye will find comfort in gazing upon him. Ibn Qayyim, he says, ومن علامات صحة القلب Also from the signs of the healthiness of the heart is that it does not grow tired of remembering its Lord and, it's not, and it does not get bored of serving him and it does not find solace with anyone else save a person who directs him to his Lord, reminds him of him, and they mutually remind one another of these affairs. And from the signs of his healthiness is that if he misses a routine supplication, a wirt, the pain he finds in that is greater than the pain that one, that one eager after money feels when he loses it. Now, when a person, after Fajr, he forgets his, his routine wirt, and he forgets it, he's, he becomes busy and preoccupied. And then when he finds out he forgot that and he realizes it, he's in regret. How did I forget me saying my du'as after Fajr? My wurud after Fajr? Or after Asr? Or before I go to bed? He finds pain. More than the pain that a person who's eager against wealth he, he, find, he finds when he loses out on his wealth. Naam. And Ibn Qayyim, he says, and from the signs of his healthiness is that he yearns to serve Allah. Of its healthiness, meaning the heart, that it yearns to serve Allah, just as one hungry yearns for food and drink. And from the signs of his healthiness is that when he enters the prayer, all of his grief and anxiety over worldly affairs leave him. He's not in the prayer thinking about this, oh man, Fulan owes me money. Oh man, I got to run back to this job. Oh man, I got to do this and I got to do that. When a person, he's entered the prayer, all his hem and gumum and hezin, all of that leaves him. He's just focused on the prayer. This is the healthy heart. He doesn't want to be busy with anything else outside of the prayer. So all of his grief and anxiety over worldly affairs leaves him. And he finds it difficult to leave the prayer. Not some people, they want to run out from the prayer. And I hope the Imam salams out, I have to do this, I have to do that. That's not the healthy heart, yeah, Juan. And in, the, in it, meaning the prayer, he finds peace and comfort. That, and it's the, it's the delight of his eye and the joy of his heart. He says, وَمَنْ عَلَمَاتِ صِحَّتِهِ and from the signs of his healthiness is that his grief is only related to one matter, and that is concerning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He only grieves when it's concerning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. And from the signs of his healthiness is that one is stingier with his time, that it goes by wasted more than the most eager of the people who strictly monitors his wealth. Naam. Look at the people on, on Wall Street, Ikhwan. Look how they strictly monitor the Dow Jones and the different, you know, the, di the different monetary things. They're always, they're always monitoring this on their phone or on Wall Street. They always monitor these, uh, their, their, their hadith upon monitoring these matters of wealth. Now, but the signs of a healthy heart is these more stingier with his time that is wasted more than these individuals. Now, these, and they can't take their eye off these matters of, of wealth. Also, that his concern for correcting his action, his actions be greater than doing the action itself. Thus, he is eager to be sincere in that action, having purity, following the sunnah, and doing it with ihsan, with precision. Along with that, he recognizes the blessings of Allah and guiding him to that, while also acknowledging him falling short regarding the right of Allah. So these are six observations, which are not witnessed except by the sound heart, which is alive. He says, and we just have... Two points left, or three points, he says, and we'll just read it. And in summary, the sound heart is the one whose concern is only regarding Allah. All of his love is for him. His movements are for him. His body is for him. His actions are for him. His sleep is for him. His awakening is for him. His speaking and speaking about him is more desirable to him than any other speech. And his thoughts revolve, revolve around everything which he loves and, and what pleases him. His isolation with Allah is more preferable to him than mixing with others, except when mixing is more beloved to Allah. And this is an important part of Quran. Look, his isolation with Allah is more preferable to him than mixing with others, 
except when mixing is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now, so when a person is alone in isolation, he's, he's isolated. He's isolated with himself and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing those things uh, uh, beloved to Allah, except when mixing is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look, mixing, mixing in the halaqat al-ilm, mixing in jum'ah, mixing in jama'ah. Some people, you find people, they say, I'm falling back. You don't find them anywhere. You don't find them in no jum'ah, no jama'ah, let alone the halaqat al-ilm. They say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm isolating myself. What type of, what type of uh, يعني, uzla is that? Now, the legislated uzla, you make uzla. When you, if you find there's fitting, people say it's fitting, I'm falling back. They say I'm falling back because it's too much fitting. Now, with uzla, if it's truly fitting, then you, you remove yourself from that if it's truly fitting, but you still mix it, you still mix in that which is khair, and jum'ah, and the jama'ah, and likewise the durus of ilm. Some of these people, you don't see them doing nothing. They say it's fitting. You don't see them in the halaqat al-ilm. And again, like we mentioned in our last, that's why you find these, these individuals, they're always confused. Because they don't busy themselves with ilm. They don't busy themselves with ilm and busy, they don't busy themselves with learning. That's why you find them always confused. Every time a fitna occurs, they're always confused. The extent of their ilm, again, like we mentioned before, the extent of their ilm is a five-minute clip somebody send them on YouTube. This is, their, this is the only thing they, they this is their seeking knowledge. Oh man, I sent that somebody sent me this clip, man. I know what's going on with them. You you read a five minute clip. Come and sit in the Kitab al Tawheed. Come and sit in the Drus of the Quran. Come and sit in Hamawi with our with our brother Abdul Razak. Come and sit in the in Malachas al Fiqh with Sheikh Jameel. Sheikh Abdul Razak. The Drus of Ilm. Naam. But they take a five minute clip or a ten minute clip. And they base their whole deen upon this. Oh, I know what's going on with fulan and illa. What type, of, what type of sense does this make? But you find many people like this, ikhwan. So now, and then he says, he says, now, so his isolation with Allah, his isolation with Allah is more preferable to him than mixing with others. Except when mixing is more beloved to Allah, the comfort of his eyes with Allah his, and his tranquility and solace is with him. This person, every time he finds himself turning to other than Allah, then he recites, Ya ayyatu, ya ayyatu, shilaya, ya ayyatu, 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 now, he says, and he repeats these words to his soul, hoping he hears it, hoping he hears it from his Lord and the, day, and the day he meets him, thus his heart will become immersed in front of his Lord and his true deity in the utmost manner of servitude. Servitude will come as something natural to his heart, not as a mere outward display, not just a mere outward display. He would do it out of love, seeking to be loved by his Lord and to draw nearer to him, just like a person who is deeply in love with their beloved one, would serve and fulfill, fulfill the needs of the one they love. Every time, every time a command or prohibition is presented to him from his Lord, he feels as if his heart is almost speaking, saying, "La baker was sa'adik. O Allah, I'm at your service. I hear you, obey you, and will fulfill what you asked of me. Furthermore, in this you have a great favor over me, and, this, and the praise still returns to you alone. If something of the bitter divine decree befalls him, he feels as if his heart is almost speaking to him, saying, O Allah, I am your slave and your needy one. I'm your servant, helpless and destitute, while you are my Lord, the mighty and the all-merciful. I have no patience unless you pour patience upon me. I have no strength unless you carry me and strengthen me. There is no place for me to seek refuge with you except, uh, from you except with you. And there is no one I can seek help with except you. I have no other door to be at except yours, and nothing can turn me away from you. Upon this, he surrenders himself in front of his Lord and wholly places his reliance in him. Then if something he, he dislikes befalls him, he says, look at this, Ikhwan, and if something he dislikes befalls him, he says, this is a gift of mercy bestowed upon me and a beneficial remedy from a concerned doctor. And if Allah diverts away from him something he loves, he says, this was something evil that Allah has diverted from my path. Look at this. Something you loved, and Allah diverts it from you. Sister, you love that man. Or, or brother, you love that sister. Allah diverted it from you. There may be some hikmah in that. 
So what does the, what does the, what does the believer they say? This is something evil that Allah has averted from my path. You wanted to get that job and you couldn't get it. It's maybe some evil that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala diverted from your path. And then he, go, he mentions some poetry. Ibn Qayyim, he says, therefore, anything that touches him, whether good or bad, he takes it as a pathway to his Lord. And through it, a door is open for him towards his Lord. Allahu Akbar. And then he mentions the lines of poetry. Beautiful words of poetry, Ikhwan. No decree has touched me, whether bitter or good, except in it I find a way to you. Carry out your decree, and in it you'll find me pleased. As surely I found you as a companion, even during calamities. Allahu Akbar. Beautiful words, Ikhwan. Now we're pleased with the decree, the good of it and the bad of it. Even if it's bad and you're patient, then you're rewarded. Now, these are the hearts and feelings they hold along with the treasures they contain. How beautiful are their secrets? Especially on the day the secrets will be examined, meaning Yom Al-Qiyamah, a great flag has been erected for the hearts. So it pursued it with diligence, and the straight path became clear to it. So it remained, it remained steadfast on it. Also, it has been summoned by something less, something else less than its lofty objective, and it refused to answer it, but it chooses the lofty objective over everything else. And with that, Ikhwan, alhamdulillah, we finish this portion. Asaf al-Iqala, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala ibn Muhammad.